What's up guys, I'm Grunt, and welcome to the fifth episode of Learning the Maps, the series where we go through each map in detail to help you get your head around them. Today we'll be taking a look at Bank. As always, timestamps are in the description, let's get started. We're going to start outside with spawns and exterior cameras. The first spawn is the parking spawn in the northwest. When you spawn in, off to the left you'll see some abandoned vehicles that you can use as cover against some early runouts and spawn peaks. On your right, you'll find some stairs that'll take you up to the roof of the parking lot. From here, you can get a nice view into the entire west side of the bank. People with DMRs like Glaz will be able to control a large portion of the map, especially if they have some teammates in lobby drawing the attention of the defenders. And if stairs aren't your thing, there's also a ladder to get up here. Moving down the garage ramp, you'll notice that you can rappel up the side of the bank. This gives you the same level of control as being on top of the parking lot. It's just a little bit more dangerous as you'll be closer to the enemies and vulnerable to some runouts. Going all the way down the ramp takes us to the first exterior camera for bank. And takes us into garage, which we'll get to later. And you can also go to the main entrance rather than going down the ramp. The second spawn is the jewelry spawn in the northeast. This spawn is basically the opposite of the parking spawn. Though instead of a parking lot, you have a tunnel leading into server. And a courtyard area giving you access to a decent chunk of the north side. It also has the second outside camera. And if you position yourself in the courtyard correctly, you can also take out the camera in the lobby. Which is that little tiny black dot right there. And the camera in Skylight, which I accidentally destroyed with that grenade. The final spawn for bank is the back alley spawn. Now if you've played bank before, you'll know to immediately get your sights up, as this is probably the most popular runout location in the entire game. You'll easily get taken out from below and from the terrace if you're not ready, so just be careful at the start of the round. Moving on though, we can get to the final exterior camera. and we can get into the back entrance, open area, or go up to the terrace. If we were to utilize the ladder back at the start, or even repel up the wall, we could get onto this roof, which will give us a good view of the terrace, and an all right view into skylight and trading. And if you get up onto the ledge and sprint, you can actually vault up onto the roof. Oh! And if you sprint, you can get up onto the roof. So now we're going to head inside. And as always, in the top left, you'll see the in-game name of the room. Another name for that room underneath it in round brackets. Callouts for that room in square brackets, and more specific callouts in curly brackets. And we're going to start at the garage ramp just outside of garage. 
Garage is a very important area to have control of when the objective is downstairs, as an attacker can easily cut off a lot of rotation for the defenders if left unattended. As an attacker, make sure you drone it out, checking the dark corners as there's quite a few hiding spots and a number of vehicles to hide behind. Moving up the ramp will take us to the basement hallway. or to the main stairs, which takes us up to the hallway on the first floor. Moving down the basement hallway takes us to our first interior camera for bank. And the elevator, which is a drop down from the first floor elevator. It's also pretty common for someone to hide behind this little cart trolley thing, so just keep an eye out for that. Vault entrance connects hallway, vault, and lockers through a breakable wall. Heading into vault, it houses a hostage and is also a common rotation for the other downstairs sites. Off to the east, we have the gold vault. You can expect to find Pulse in the gold side looking to get a C4 towards the server door and CCTV especially if you're playing bomb as you can easily deny the default plant with that c4 and for those of you who don't know default plant just means the spot where the attackers usually plant in this case it's in cctv right next to the server door sprinkler hallway has some breakable walls on either side leading into cc and lockers going around into lockers it houses a secure site and a bomb that it shares with cc definitely one of the more popular sites on bank Over to CCTV, very common way for attackers to push downstairs objectives, just keep an eye on the hatch above into admin. If attackers want to get into CC, they'll probably just push through the tunnel into server, and then they'll probably try and open up the server walls. As a defender, you can try to counter this from the hatch above. Not too much to say about the tunnel and sewer, except if a defender enters the tunnel, they will get marked. And the last room in the basement is the server or blue stairs, which will take us up to the first floor. Going up server stairs takes us under skylight. It has the hatch looking into server. And if an attacker has a death wish, they'll end up here when they rappel down from the skylight. It also connects archives and the kitchen. Before we go into kitchen though, this little back room is where you can expect to find defenders prepping for the runouts at the start of a round. Kitchen, or staff room, houses a hostage and a bomb site that it shares with open area. It's also crucial for defending open area and archives to some extent. It has breakable walls leading into skylight, admin, open area and the printer room. Open area houses a secure site and the bomb that pairs with kitchen. Off to the side is the printer room, which allows attackers to quickly access open area. Open area is vital to defending archives as leaving it unattended gives the attackers direct access to the archives wall in admin, which will probably end up in a loss if you're not ready for it. Admin also has the second hatch, this one goes down into CCTV. Open area also has a hatch, and this one will take you into the basement hallway in front of the sprinkler hallway. The first floor hallway has the second inside camera. And it'll also take us back to the main stairs.
and takes us to the elevators. The east one being a drop down from the top floor and the west one having the hatch that takes you downstairs. Lobby, the biggest room in bank. It goes into private office, which is a safer way for attackers to attack lobby, assuming they know how to drone properly. It also goes out onto the garage roof, which can be used for some runouts. Because lobby is so big and it has that wall of windows, it's pretty rare to find defenders trying to hold it from lobby itself. They'll usually try and hold it from somewhere deeper inside the bank. The main entrance is another common entrance for attackers. Just make sure you drone out this corner first, otherwise someone will probably brain you as you enter. And Lobby also has the third interior camera. And when you're droning for main entrance, it might be wise to also drone this spot here, as defenders can easily pick you off as you come inside. Moving into tellers now. It has a hostage and a bomb that pairs with archives, and it is also vital for defending archives. Just be careful though as the roof above you is breakable, and this wall here will also open up into the hallway. Reception has the fifth hatch. This one goes down into the vault entrance. It's probably not wise to defend lobby from here as a glass on parking lot will quickly ruin your day. Last room on the first floor, archives houses a secure site and the bomb site that pairs with tellers. Late in the round you can probably expect to find someone in this corner, so sledge or buck, take them out from above. Heading up Skylight Stairs takes us to the second floor. When spawning at Jewelry, make sure you check all the upstairs windows for spawn peaks, otherwise you can have fun sitting in spectator mode for the rest of the round. Skylight will take you out onto the terrace, which can be used for a run out onto back alley, or to get into Skylight and trading. Following the balcony around takes us to the last camera for bank. Heading into storage, commonly used to get into CEO or as a hiding place for CAV. It has the first upstairs hatch and that'll take you into admin. Going into the hallway takes us to the 7th hatch on bank. This one takes you into the middle of open area. The hallway will also take us to trading room, which will only really see action when the objective is upstairs or in open area. Maybe archives if a defender wants to use the 8th hatch to control open area from the back corner. back into the hallway now. It can also take us to the top of main stairs which will take us back down to the first floor hallway. And it can also take us into meeting room, one of the surrounding rooms used to defend the upstairs sites. Losing this as a defender usually means the end of the round is about to kick off. Lounge has a bomb that it shares with CEO, which happens to be the final objective room. 
It houses all three sites and is the least popular site because it can basically be attacked from all sides including underneath. Going through the connector will take us to the lobby balcony which has windows leading into the front desk or front office, whatever you want to call it. Usually deadly for a defender to hide in here as someone on the parking lot can quickly take them out. Finally we have the lobby stairs and the upstairs elevator which has the last hatch taking us down to the first floor. Now let's head up to the roof. We're going to start in the back alley near electrical. The first thing you'll notice about the roof is the skylights. Commonly used when the objective is upstairs, they can easily be used to cut off the upstairs hallway. Other than that, you can use it to watch over the terrace or to peek through some windows, but that's about it really for the roof. This skylight will allow you to cut off the main stairs and the meeting room door. You can also use the roof to switch sides of the map quickly as an attacker. And unless you want to let defenders know what someone ragdolling two stories looks like, probably don't use these skylights. Okay, now let's look at the objectives starting with bomb sites. The first pair is in Lounge and CEO. The second pair is in Staff Room and Open Area. Third set's in Tellers and Archives. And the final pair is Downstairs in Lockers and CCTV. Secure sites now. The first one's in CEO. Second one's in Archives. Third one's in Open Area. And the last one is downstairs in Lockers. Last and least, hostages. The first hostage is in CEO. Second fuse targets in tellers. Third bullet bag is in the kitchen. And the final sacrifice is waiting to get shot in the vault. So that's about it for the video. After this, there'll be a montage of peaks, runouts, and useful rotations. Before I go though, the next map will probably be the new Hereford base as Grim Sky is coming out pretty soon. And if this did help you, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the newly reworked Hereford base.